In this video, I'm going to show you how to create this liquid text effect right inside of Adobe After Effects. So let's get into it. So once we're inside of Adobe After Effects and we have a brand new composition created, the first thing that we need to do is create the liquid animation. So we're just going to go layer, new, solid, go ahead and select a color by selecting the color box. So let's go for a nice blue I'll press OK, OK. And then from there, we're just going to zoom out to 50% and we're just going to expand this outwards like so. Now, from here, you just want to go ahead and select the pen tool at the top of After Effects. The keyboard shortcut for this is G. So press G on the keyboard. That should load up the pen tool. And then from there, you just want to go ahead and create a wiggly line down the middle. So this is going to be the top of the wave. So go ahead and create a new point on the left. We'll go over to the right, hold down when you create that new point, and then just pull this over to the right to create a curve. Then we'll go down here, we'll do the same thing again. We'll go up, we'll do the same thing again, and that is our basic wave. Now from here, you just want to go down, create a point on the bottom right, point on the bottom left, and go back up to there. So we've got this wave here. Now, from here, you want to go into that mask. So we'll go into the solid layer. We'll select the drop down arrow, masks, mask one, and we'll move the mask path down so that this is off screen, like so. Then we'll create a brand new keyframe on the mask path. We'll go over roughly one or two seconds, and then we'll pull this up so that it now fills the screen. You may have to pull these bottom left and bottom right points down just so that they don't creep into the video. So let's play that back and see how that looks. That looks good, but the problem is there's no life there. Unfortunately, we've just got this dip and it's just animating up. It just looks a bit boring. So we're going to go to that end point. We'll zoom back out to 50% and then you just want to change these points. So we'll push this one up. We'll push this one up as well, and then we'll push this one down. And of course, feel free to make these edges even smoother. So round them off even more using this tool. And then when we play this back, you should notice there is a bit more movement there. There you go. You can see there's a bit more life in there. The problem is, though, it doesn't feel super noticeable. So I'm just going to zoom back out to 50% and we'll go back to that second keyframe. And I'm going to make this even more noticeable by pulling this up, pulling this down, pulling this down and playing this back. That looks really cool. So from here, we'll just create a brand new keyframe on the mask at around seven or eight seconds. This is the transition out. We'll copy that first keyframe and we'll put that to around nine seconds. So another two second gap. So that will animate back down again. Of course, feel free to change the properties of this mask if you wanted that to look a bit different on the way down. So if we hover over that last keyframe, of course, we can always pull these down, push this one up, move that one over, and that will slightly change the look of that transition as it transitions back down like so. Now from here, we're just going to copy that layer. So we'll go Command C, Command V, go to the bottom layer and we'll go into effects and presets, search for ramp and that should load gradient ramp. We'll drop the gradient ramp on the layer below and then you want to change the start color to a whitish color. The end color can be a white blue somewhere in between. So like a light blue. Now from here, we're just going to zoom in and we'll offset the top layer. So the blue layer will offset that by three or four frames. There you go. So we're seeing that white layer coming through now. Of course, if you wanted that to stand out a little bit more, then feel free to change the keyframes on this second layer. So we'll go to that second keyframe like so. And feel free to move these around a bit. So make that look a little bit different. So put that down, put that up there. Now when we play this back, that should look awesome. There you go. So you've got two different layers animating in at the same time, and we've got this nice wave effect happening. So from here, we're just going to select both of those layers. We'll right click, select pre-compose, and we'll call this wave. Now from here, we'll go into the T icon. That is the horizontal type tool. Select anywhere in this video and type out your word. Now go into the character window. You can change the font. You can change the size. You can add some weight to this. Do what you need to do with this. But once you're happy with this, you just want to place this in the middle roughly. So I'm going to use the proportional grid to help me with that. That's in the middle. And now from here, we have to make sure that we're in the right window down here. So this is what you should see. Mode, track mat, parent and link. If this is what you're seeing, then just go ahead and select toggle switches slash modes. 
Make sure the text is on the top layer and the wave is on the bottom layer. Then they go onto the wave layer, select Trek Matte and select Alpha Matte Brooker or the text. And now when we play this back, you'll notice you've got this really cool wave effect now happening on our text. And then when that transitions back out again at around seven seconds, that should transition back out again. Now you may have noticed that that was extremely quick. So if you wanted to slow that down, then you just want to go into the wave pre-comp, go onto both layers, select M, and then you just want to drag these keyframes, the second keyframes over to the right. So that will slow that action out. And then the same thing with the last frames, just increase that gap there. We'll go back to the main composition. And there you go, that was a lot slower and we can actually see that movement now. So that was the transition in, the transition out should start now. Now, unfortunately, when this transitions in, we're seeing this white layer, but when that transitions out, we're missing that. We're just catching the blue layer. So in order to correct this, we just want to go into the wave pre-comp. The white layer is the layer below. As you can see, if I turn this off, that is the white layer. And we can rename this if we wanted to make that less confusing. But the reason why we're losing this is because that transitions off first. And because that's behind, it's already moved by the time the blue layer has been revealed. So we're just going to grab the keyframes on the blue layer. We'll drag those back in time and that should reveal that white layer there. As you can see. So if we go back to the main composition with the text, we look at the transition out and there you go. We've got the blue and the white shape layer animating off. And there you go. Once you're happy with the look of that, all you have to do is put the text and the wave pre-comp in their own pre-comp again. So we'll call this liquid text. And there you go. You're now free to do what you want with this text because it's in its own pre-comp. You can change the scale. You can move the position, the rotation. You can animate this, drop this on top of some footage. It's completely up to you. But there you go. That is the liquid text effect now completed inside of Adobe After Effects. Thank you ever so much for watching this video. I really do appreciate your support and hopefully I will see you on the next video. See you there.